Today we're visiting the Nylon Geyser, the world's only moving mud pot and the destroyer of a highway. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. This is Steve. Right now I'm standing on Highway 111 north of Nyland, California, or at least what was once Highway 111. Due to a unique oddity of nature, they've actually had to move Highway 111 about 100 feet to the west, right over here, at the cost of millions of dollars. And the reason they've had to move the highway is because here near the Salton Sea, is the world's only moving mud volcano. Nyland is located about 20 miles north of Raleigh, California, on the east side of the Salton Sea. This whole area is incredibly geologically active due to it being near the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. I'm walking on Highway 111 right now, and what we've come to see is just right in front of us. This mud pot, or mud volcano, first appeared about 1953, a few hundred feet east of here. It didn't cause any issues until about 2015, when for some reason, the mud pot started moving southwest. It started by moving only about 20 feet per year, which is still pretty incredible because these things usually don't move at all. And you can see how, this is right up against the roadway now, there's some pipes in here. But at times over the last few years, it has moved as much as 10 feet in a month. This thing is pumping about 40,000 gallons of water per day. For 60 years, the mud pot wasn't any concern at all. It was just out in the field. But when it started moving, there were train tracks and then a highway in its path. And this was gonna cause a lot of trouble. If you look at Google's satellite view, it was taken in 2015 when its path of destruction was just starting and the railroad tracks and the road are in their original position. The railroad threw everything they could at stopping it before it reached the train tracks. They tried filling the geyser with large rocks, and I mean they used a ton of rocks, but they just sunk into the ground. Wells were dug to try and relieve pressure. They installed a wall 75 to 80 feet into the ground, but nothing worked. In late 2018, the geyser reached the tracks. The railroad was forced to build detour tracks, and it took some pretty impressive engineering work to keep this major rail corridor open. Eventually, the geyser moved past the tracks, and the railroad was able to rebuild. But now, Highway 111 was in the geyser's path. This part of the highway started as the North Shore Road and was designated as part of Highway 111 in the 1960s. The road mostly saw local traffic back then, as most travelers took the bigger Highway 99 on the other side of the Salton Sea. In September 2019, the state closed the highway for several weeks and began its own battle with the geyser. Like the railroad before it, they tried diverting the water and building walls, but in the end, they just bypassed five miles of the highway by moving the road to the west. The plan is now to just rebuild the highway after the geyser moves through. This thing is formed by carbon dioxide coming to the surface, and one of the theories is that the carbon dioxide is coming to the surface at an angle and the upper side of the channel is slowly being eroded, causing the geyser to move. Eventually it will stop moving once the geyser is directly above the source. But that's only a theory they don't know for sure. If that theory is accurate, the state better hope the source isn't right between the two sections of highway they built. Aside from the carbon dioxide, this geyser has that sulfur, rotten egg smell, and it's pretty bad. And I'm not sure if it's the geyser, the smell that's attracting them, or just the general Salton Sea area, but there are some horseflies, 
that are biting like crazy. I must taste delicious to them. She won't let me film her, but my wife is running around in circles trying to avoid getting bitten by these flies. They say the carbon dioxide tends to fill the crater, especially when it's cold out, which it isn't right now. But if you fell in, even if you managed to swim, you'd suffocate because of the carbon dioxide. So I'm trying to stay as far away from this thing as I possibly can. I'm not sure how solid the ground is around it. Above the main geyser, there's kind of an upper secondary geyser too. This one looks to be a little bit smaller, but still pretty active. Here's part of the drainage system the state built to help divert the water. As you can see, it's pretty dry in there right now, so probably not working as planned. If you ever wanted to see what it looks like under a highway, here you go. Whatever these cables were for, now they're just being held in place by a rock. There was a fiber optic line that went through here, but it had to be moved because of the geyser. There are a couple pipes going through here too. The water isn't hot, so I think eventually it'll just pass by those without doing too much damage. If this geyser would have just appeared a quarter mile further to the west or to the east, it would have been just an interesting oddity of nature, possibly the only moving mud volcano in the world. But because it appeared where it did, millions of dollars have been spent just to teach us once again that nature almost always wins. So that's our look at the Nyland Geyser. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.